What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. Inside of this video, I'm gonna show you really quickly how to edit automotive photos, or at least a quick take on how to take your photo from this to this. Without further ado, let's watch that intro and get into it. All right guys, so inside this video, we're gonna do just a quick one image tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to be downloading the free raw files featured on signatureedits.com this week, so you can grab these if you want to actually try and edit them for yourself. Got a bunch of DNGs that aren't previewing, but we're just gonna import all of them, okay? So go ahead, import the photos. And thank you to the amazing photographers who did upload this work. It's all work from the community here. So we've got Maria Sidorenko, thank you. And the people who uploaded anonymously, thank you so much. You guys are amazing. And it's great that you're giving back to the community. Cool. So let's just import these photos. And we're just going to focus on this photo number one, Mr. Truck. So let's open the composition, take a quick look, and just assess the situation. What are things that need to be improved, changed, whatever? So first off, as we look at it, there's not a whole lot going on. Not very interesting. That's one thing about car automotive photography. Like if you take a car and you put it on a boring background, boring kind of situation, like possibly a parking lot, it's never going to look as amazing if we took this, put it on top of a mountain somewhere, right? So that's point number one is the composition itself doesn't necessarily lend to the image. So how can we limit the distraction? Because if it's not adding, it's taking away. So first off, we're just going to crop it and I'm actually going to try and do it portrait. And that's going to get rid of our focus on the background. Now, we could zoom in a little bit more and just really like do a hero shot on the front of the truck. But obviously that composition feels a little bit weird because we're kind of cropping out a lot of the car itself. So we might just change our orientation or crop in. So something like this probably is going to feel a lot better because the rest of it, not really adding. Okay, next, let's just try and level it very slightly by hitting the R key. I'm going to grab my adjustment brush and get to work. So this is going to be a lot of brushing to really just refine the composition and say, what do we want to focus on? What do we want to take away so we're not distracted by it? Okay, so the first things first, I'm going to just do a select subject mask because I want to eliminate the background as much as possible. So I'm going to invert that AI selection with the apostrophe key on my keyboard. And I'm going to take my brushes and I'm going to go down here to Brooding Dehaze Darken. If you don't have these brushes, you can buy them at signatureedits.com, of course, or you can just download or pause the video and just copy these kind of settings. Nothing super magical about here. This thing, you can also save it as a preset for yourself. But if you do want a workflow of different brushes, that's available for you. Okay, so I'm just going to take it, darken down the background, and we've just taken away some clarity. We can even lower the texture maybe a little bit. And sometimes that'll work. Sometimes that'll look great. Other times, you might actually find it's better if we make the rest of it feel more rugged because we don't necessarily want it to be dreamy. Maybe we want it to feel rugged because that matches the vibe of the truck a little bit more, right? So we can actually increase the contrast instead of decreasing the contrast. So I'm sort of feeling like that's probably our solution, more so than the alternative. And then we can darken down the shadows. And that's really going to make this car pop, right? So we've gone from this to this. Pretty easy, pretty quick, okay? Now, there are some things that we've darkened by accident, like underneath the wheels and whatever, so we'll have to come back to that. But for now, I'm pretty happy we're making some progress. And by the way, if this video is helpful for you, can you do me a favor, hit that like button if you're enjoying it so far, leave a comment, whatever. As things strike you, share them with others, we're better together. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do, probably, is I'm gonna see if I can get rid of these lines because I find them really distracting and ugly. So I'm gonna use my spot removal tool. You can grab the Band-Aid icon to do that. I'm going to select a different area of pavement that hopefully Lightroom's going to be able to mask this out. Turn your feather up. Okay, so I need to make my brush a little bigger and then maybe I can get away with this. Sometimes this will work. Sometimes you might have to go into Photoshop or something like that. And as you can see, like Lightroom, it's so ironic. They add all sorts of AI updates, but then some tools never get better. I don't get it. So we can take down our feather. And sometimes if you find that heel doesn't work, clone does. So just switch back and forth, see which might work better. Once more. Okay, so that's not necessarily perfect, but I do think it's better than it was. So we can mess around with this a little bit more by grabbing an adjustment brush and just darkening it down. So take the shadows down, contrast down. Maybe the black's down a little bit. All right, now all of a sudden that line is pretty much gone. You and I know it was there and that we can still probably see it a little bit, but 
to the average viewer who's looking at the truck, not going to notice it, right? So we can follow that same process, grab another eraser tool, grab the back of this line, see if we can get lucky. Yeah, that worked great. Again, so, so much of editing in general is less about adding a whole bunch of stuff and more about taking away things that are just removing from the composition. Okay, that's much better. And one more. And I am kind of one of those guys who I don't like Photoshop, don't want to bother messing around. It always feels like it takes way longer than it should for me to do stuff because I'm just not that good at it. Oh, that is for the main image, not for my clone. So I try and avoid it whenever possible. And in this case, it looks like we're going to get lucky. So here's before and here's after. Now we do have a weird funkiness going on here. So we'll try and just see if we can do something about that. Cool. And then again, go in by pressing K on our keyboard. And because this is in the background, not the focus of the image, we can probably get away with just adding some dehaze maybe dropping the exposure slightly, All right? Just blending it together basically by doing this, lower the clarity. Okay, we've made some progress right here before and after, and we haven't even worked on the truck. How awesome is that? All right, now we're gonna talk about the actual truck, maybe the rest of the background, other things we could do. Of course, we could try and do a sky replacement if we wanted to head over into Photoshop, or we could just go select sky in Lightroom. Lightroom will think, and then if you want to, let's just grab a, I don't know, dramatic sky. What do we got in here? Dun, 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 cloud enhancer. Sometimes this works great. Sometimes it looks kind of rubbish. So here's without and here's with. It's just adding some contrast, a little bit of pop, raising the highlights and you can mess around, right? Like maybe you actually want it to really feel like a super kind of stormy day. So by doing this, we enhance the texture, add some more contrast, make the clouds pop a little bit. Okay, so again, here's before, here's after. We've really just zeroed in on this truck. You might feel like I've gone too far in the edit and maybe I have, that's totally fine. If you think so, leave it in the comments below, do it differently and tag me at Signature Edits Co so I can see what you come up with. Okay, now we're just gonna do a whole bunch of masking, honestly. Um, maybe before that, we'll do some universal settings for the image overall. So we've kind of got it where we want it to sit. We're gonna add some brushes to make the tires brighter, bring out some details in this car, and then maybe do some overall edits. So let's try just adding a basic preset, mess around here. So you obviously don't need these presets in order to do this, but it's just giving me a quick starting point. Like presets are not about giving you exactly the look that you want with one click. Sometimes they can, but most of the time it's just like giving you a leg up, saving you a bunch of time and making your workflow faster. So there's some different options, right? Like this looks cool if you're into like a really aggressive edit. Um, the Signature Edit presets also have adjustable profiles so you can kind of vary the amount of intensity. I sort of like that, to be honest. Like, it's super contrasty, but I don't hate it. I'll maybe take that down, and I'll cool it down a little bit. Because I feel like the blue with the blue sky kind of is sort of sick. Something like that, okay? So before, after, super contrasty. I can maybe lower that even more. And then take my blacks down a little bit. Cool. Now, if you don't have the presets, obviously, you can grab some free ones in the description below, or we can just hit Reset All. And let's do it without... So I'm just gonna add a basic S curve to my image. I'm gonna warm it up. I'm gonna maybe play with the split toning a bit, add some clarity and some texture, maybe even a little dehaze. That's gonna make me raise the blacks because it's looking really crunchy. And so much of this is just feel, right? It's messing around and saying, okay, that looks a little too pink. Let's make it a little more green. We're gonna go down to the split toning. I'm gonna try doing, I don't know, like a teal and orange. I don't know. We're gonna make some nice, shadows here. Let's go with a blue, bluish purple. And then our highlights, we can try going in the other direction. See what feels right. I'm thinking probably somewhere on there. So here's without and here's with, like not super radical. And then midtones, of course, you can mess around, see what you come up with, but I don't want to take it too far. And I already probably have. Like, as I look at this, this image is pretty intense. So the likely, likely story is I would back off and whatever. This is just showing you some different options, right? So we could also desaturate the sky. I think that there's too much saturation going on up there. So I am going to take the saturation down. And oh yeah, that feels so much better. So much more lifelike, right? Before, after. 
And the car looks really chunky because there's lens corrections enabled. So I could go down here to my lens correction, go to profile and say, don't enable. You're gonna see it pops back out. I actually think it looks better with this image without lens corrections on. So always make sure you check that. Distortion, again, we can kind of make it go the other way. And sometimes, especially with an automotive, you can get away with it, where it's almost gonna feel more like a wide angle lens and it'll feel kind of neat. So before, after. Right, totally changes the way it feels. Now, of course, <laughs> if you handed this to Ford, they might be like WTF, because now it isn't necessarily looking like the vehicle actually looks, but I like it. I think it's kind of cool. We're going to roll with it. Okay, so we've got a nice like lens, not lens. We've got like a sun flare coming down through the clouds. Let's actually enhance that. So two ways to do it. First is going to be just making a radial filter. So you can hit K on your keyboard, create new mask, and go to radial gradient, or just hit shift M, save yourself some time. Drag it up here where the light already is. We're just gonna lower the exposure, dehaze, clarity, texture. We're just enhancing what is already there, which is kind of this nice little halo coming through the clouds, right? Something like that looks pretty good. Maybe add a little bit of warmth if you want to. See how that feels or doesn't feel. Thinking something like that, not too bad. Of course, now that we added profile adjustments, I'm noticing another line. So you're gonna see like, the more people you watch edit who are like good at what they do better than me, you're going to see that an amazing image isn't the result of like, okay, let's apply a preset and we're done. Or let's make some really amazing hardcore changes with these effects. It's about saying, okay, that building is actually distracting me a little bit. Let's get rid of it. Okay. This road, we don't really need that. Not adding the story, this little hill thing. And they just would go through and fix every little thing about this image until fix after fix after fix 1% adds up. If you do that a hundred times, all of a sudden your photo is going to be much better than when you started, right? So we've got a nice flare. Our lights are sort of focusing, not focusing. They're standing out a little bit more because we've darkened everything down. But what I could do is just copy over this radial gradient. And we're going to reshape it and put it in front of the headlights. Something like that. And the light is going in this direction, so like that. And of course, you can also feather the amount of effect the way that it's looking. And what a lot of people don't always realize is that really quickly and easily you can adjust things. Hello, where do you go, radial gradient? That's kind of funny. Did I delete it? That's not it. Jeez. Ah, it's inside of here. Well, that's just not, not fun for me. Ah, oh, well. That's why it's not letting me adjust the settings. But for now, we'll just roll with it. So we can add a little bit of a headlight haze in front of the headlights. So before, after, that one definitely needs to be moved. Bear with me. I definitely don't always get it right on the first time. Okay, and then normally you just adjust the amount, but because these are all connected, when I lower the headlight one, it's gonna lower the top. So this is kind of an issue for me. So how can we solve this? Maybe by duplicating this so that it's twice as strong. Okay, so we've added some headlight. Now we're gonna add another adjustment brush and we're just gonna go in and like follow the trim. So we'll grab kind of the lines that are dark Things that are meant to stand out, be nice and sharp. We're gonna add some sharpening, add some contrast. So I'm not being super precise about this because, you know, tutorial depends what you're using this photo for. But I'm just following all of the really dark shadows, okay? So you can do this manually and that's gonna give you the best results because you're like taking control and finding the exact parts of the image that really do need and benefit from that enhancement. Or you can take a little shortcut here, which I'll show you in a second. So first, let's just take these shadows down. So you can see like here's with them up, here's with them down. Take them down a little bit, add a bit of clarity. And instantly like the whole truck just pops. So just so you can see where it's happening and what it's doing. Take it up, don't need that much necessarily, but you get the point. Now here's the little trick. If we hit K on our keyboard and then we just go across the entire truck 
we can go down here or up here or wherever they've moved it to where we can add a luminance range or a color range. So we're going to do a luminance range mask. And I didn't quite set this up properly, as you can tell, because it's now ignoring the brush that I just did. But we can just find, okay, where's the real dark parts of this image? And this is all we're going to select. In this case, not really working. Lightroom's a funny one. Sometimes it works, does a great job. Other times, not so much. So in this case, probably the easiest thing is just going to be doing it manually. And I'm going to do the same thing again now with the highlights on this image. So anywhere that it's a little bit brighter. So we've got rain droplets, water droplets, around the headlight, these little lights. All right, just grab those, the windshield. Now there's an ugly reflection on here we could maybe get rid of. We'll worry about that in a second. The rims. Even the tires because there's highlights hiding in there. And there's already a lot on the hood of the car, so I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to take our whites and take them up. Okay, so here's what it's doing. We're just adding a little bit of depth to the photo, right? And we can raise the highlights up. We can do the same thing if we want to. We can try adding some textures, see how that feels. Maybe a little clarity. Okay. So before and after. We've kind of made that car sing a little bit. This is kind of still bugging me. I would go back and fix that. And the windshield reflection, it would be fine if it wasn't for this tree that's in the actual windshield and it looks like a shirt or some kind of seat cover or whatever here. So we'll try and fix that in Lightroom. If not, you might have to head into Photoshop. And I'm not going to worry about that for this tutorial. We're mostly just showing you how to get the basics of the car edit. And there's lots of videos on how to do replacement and stuff in Photoshop. Okay, so like that. I'm just drawing and my computer is struggling to keep up, so apologies if it's not totally working for you. Okay. All right, let's try this again. I paused the video because my computer was crashing. Lightroom does not like using spot removal too much while screen recording. Just going to say. Okay. okay, so I'm trying to do this little by little. And of course, because I'm screen recording, Lightroom does not want to keep up. Again, the computers get faster and faster. The spot removal never gets better. And yet, somehow, it still takes longer and longer for Lightroom to use this. I don't know why. <laughs> if you do, please tell me in the comments below. Like, what am I doing wrong here? Maybe if I was using image previews instead of no preview. I don't know. But let's just ignore that for today. That might be a Photoshop job. In the meantime, what we can do is just go to our adjustment brush. And we're just going to brush on there. Take the texture way down. Clarity way down. DA is way down. We're basically trying to get the contrast out of that reflection so it doesn't show up as much. Um, but looks like that's not effective. So we might just leave it as is. And if it's bugging you too, too much, then just go into Photoshop and fix it. Okay, so other things that are wrong with this image, obviously the truck, still the lighting's not perfectly balanced, so we could play with the light a little bit. So we could just add a slight bit of brightness here. We're talking just a little bit of a pop like that. Again, kind of down here feels like a little bit too dark. And then of course, like this sky is just like way too much, way too hard, Ryan, way too hard. And back here is a little bit darker than the rest of the image. And then this hillside and cloud feels a little bit dark here too, okay? So I can dial back my edits. I can also just lower the contrast in those areas a little bit. Something like that, okay? So here's our before. Here's our after. I'm not a amazing car editor. I'm just giving you a starting point. Like, okay, here's some tips. Here's how you can get started with your automotive photography. And hopefully something in here was helpful for you. Of course, the longer you spend on this photo, the more you focus on the details and getting things right, the better it's going to be. Because you can still focus in on things like the logo. You have to think like, what is the brand going to be interested in? Obviously, they want their logo to really pop. So we can do that. 
Uh, same goes with Ford, like up here. They're going to want it. They're going to want that to stand out. So make sure you focus on those things. The little features of the car that make it unique, you want to make sure you're bringing those out. Just adding contrast, 1% improvements, and eventually you can take your images from here to here, right? Little. Now, one last thing that I haven't done is add sharpening to the image. I mean, there's a lot of things we could continue doing. We could continue playing all day, right? Like if you're that kind of photographer, you can spend all day on a photo and make it absolutely incredible. We haven't added any sharpening though. So let's start out by just grabbing a little example. Let's go with the F. We're going to take our amount all the way up because that's what we want. Just kidding. Uh, we are going to take it all the way up so we can see what we're doing and make it really clear. And you can always hold the option key and that will help you get a better sense of what's going on. So taking up the radius, we're going to add slightly more sharpening to the areas we are sharpening by having like a thicker line of contrast. Detail is going to attempt to preserve detail in the photo as you're masking and adding noise reduction, stuff like that. We probably don't need that much detail. We want it around there. And then holding down Alt Option while you drag your mask will show you just what's being sharpened and what's not. Whatever is white is being sharpened. Whatever is not is not being sharpened. So we want to drag our mask up to the point where it's only sharpening the parts of the image that actually matter, in this case, the truck. So here's without sharpening. And here's with. So it really makes that image pop that much more. Now it's starting to feel more like a professional photo. Okay, so a couple last things. Grab this little white piece of something. Anything that's distracting, we just want to take a couple last seconds to go in and fix that. And of course, if I were editing this for a client or for a portfolio or whatever, I would take my time here and I get rid of as much as possible. Like even this branch in behind here, we could probably get rid of that in Photoshop. We could go up in here, grab this tiny little spec. We're on spec patrol. Remember, if it's not adding to the photo, it is taking away. Okay. So if this was helpful, do me a favor. Can you hit that like button for me? Leave a comment below and let me know what the most helpful tip was that you can apply to your editing and subscribe. Grab some more content by hitting that little bell notification and grab some free presets, free downloads, free tutorials, whatever down in the description links below. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome and peace.